Welcome to the Big Dumb Networking Dude channel. Today we're going to do exactly what the title says. Pretty on par for the course, but we are going to be installing Cisco FMC Virtual on Proxmox. I actually do have this set up and I've been using it for quite some time now. So as we go through this, you will see I already have a VM set up. It's working as expected, but again, small disclaimer, this is not supported by Cisco. Uh, FMC on Proxmox is not a supported deployment at this time, so you will not get the tax support that you would hope and love if you go ahead and do this. But in lab environments, small environments, you know, might not be a bad thing. And like I said, I've, I've had it working and it is actually working very well. It's very easy to get up and running. It's basically the same exact process as doing the FTDV, the secure firewall virtual on Proxmox, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, let's get into it. Go ahead and fire up your favorite browser and navigate to software.cisco.com. And we're going to be looking for secure firewall management center virtual, FMC virtual and I'm going to be installing version 7.6. That is the latest version. And this version also comes with some of the AI features built in and able to be enabled. So that's something I wanna play around with a bit. So that is the one I'm going to be running. And this is kind of dependent on you in your use case. I will be installing this KVM package because it does have a little bit less of a system requirement as opposed to the virtual 300 KVM. You are more than welcome to run that. I am not going to have 300 firewalls that I'm going to be using to manage. So that is not necessary for me, but to look at the system requirements. So the regular one that I'm going to be downloading, you know, for vcpus and 32 gigs of ram very manageable uh the other one 32 vcpus and 64 gigs of for 64 gigs of ram excuse me um you know i do have that available to me right now within the server that i'm running this on but it is completely completely overkill so i'm not going to do that so this is the one we're going to want to download I've already downloaded it to save time. Once you have it downloaded, you need to get it over to your Proxmox. I store all my images at var, lib, vz, template, and qcow. You can put it wherever you want. I just like to have some sort of organization, so that is where I popped mine over to. Once you have it over there, we are good and ready to get it installed. As you can see, I actually already have an FMCV up and running. I am using this for this lab right here, and I will probably make some videos at a later date regarding some of the stuff I'm doing here, but just to kind of show you that it does work. So this is the current FMC that I have powered on. As you can see, as I mentioned, we do have some of the, the AI assistant and that is working. So. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to figure out how to get this set up. I just wanted to show you that it is set up and, and, and working good. But so let's go over here. Let's create a new VM. Got to give it a name. So we'll just call this FMC VYT. Next, so we are not, just like the firewall, we are not gonna be installing any media on this right now. So we'll say, do not use. For system, we can go ahead and keep these all as default. Disks, again, it doesn't matter because we are going to be applying that uh, QCOW image into a disk. So uh, we'll just keep it with the 32 that it has. So for virtual CPUs, I'm gonna say two sockets. We will say four cores, so a total of eight. Oh, actually, I think we only need two. So four total cores, and then again, just like the firewall, this is extremely important. You need to go down and select host as your CPU architecture type. Memory, 
Again, gonna give it 32 gigs, so that's three, two, seven, six, eight. Network, again, this is very dependent on your use case. As you could see in this lab, all of the management interfaces for all these firewalls are going to this external network right here. That is the network I'm going to put this FMC on so that they're all able to communicate back to it and I don't have to do any kind of silly routing within my lab. So that network for me is EVE1. Again, that will be different for you. So go ahead and hit confirm. We'll hit finish. We'll give that just a second to apply and get spun up here. So that's good. Um, we can go ahead and actually detach that hard drive because we are not going to be using it. And then we can go ahead and just remove it altogether. Once we've done that, we need to go to our shell and we need to go to wherever you put your template. Again, mine is the var lib vz template qcow. And then we need to run, I've got that command somewhere, the qm import disk. You wanna make sure that this is the ID of your VM. I believe it was 108. Let me just verify that real quick. 108, yep. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter on that. That's going to take a, a few seconds to go ahead and get that transferred over. Cool, so that should be all transferred now. We can head back over to our other window. Let's see if it showed up yet. It has not yet. Let's give a quick refresh. Depending on the size, it can take a minute to pop up here as an unused disk, but it should be coming up here soon. Why are you the way that you are? So that took a little bit longer than expected. I actually had to go back in and run that command again, but our disk has now showed up. So we can go ahead and the disk action. Oh, add. Oops. click on that. Go ahead and sit, hit add. So we now have that added and now we just need to go and change our boot order. Oops, geez Louise, I'm cooking it, clicking everywhere right now boot order, make sure that's selected, and we will put that at the top. Hit OK, go to console, and go ahead and hit start now. So now, as we start this process, it is going to be a while. I think the last time I deployed it, it might have been somewhere between 30 to 40 minutes I'm guessing to get this thing fully deployed it's very uneventful very few prompts if any if I can remember correctly that you need to select so I will probably pause this video and start back up again once it's ready to be logged into I will say however so in my environment that network is connected to is offering up DHCP and the last time I did get a DHCP lease, obviously, um, on that management interface that I have it connected to. And I had to go in and set the static IP that I wanted. So I'll, I'll probably show that when that time comes. But in the meantime, I'm probably going to go grab something to eat because it's going to be a bit. And then we'll get back into it. Welcome back. The installation is complete. I will say that took about a solid 40 minutes to wrap up. There was no intervention needed for me. I didn't have to type anything in. It was just a complete, almost quote unquote, silent install. So as you can see, we could go ahead and log in right now to the CLI 
and make some changes such as taking that management IP and ch changing it from DHCP to static. But I'm gonna go ahead and show how to do that in the GUI, but you could do this definitely in the CLI if you wanted to. So popped over to Meraki to see what IP my MX handed out. And it says 10, 12, 12, 16. And as you can see, 10, 12, 12, 16, we are up and running. This is gonna be the first time logging in, so it should be the default login, which I believe is admin and admin one, two, three. Cool, so that worked. And yep, we're gonna to have to create a new password. Go ahead and do that real quick. Yeah, we'll do that later. We can register later. All right, so now that we're in here, we can go ahead and, like I said, change that management interface to a static IP. It would probably make a lot more sense than having, you know, DHCP. So for that, we'd go to system, go to configuration, and then go to management interface. And then here's where we can do the edit, you know, change the DH or say, change it from DHCP to static, uh, give it the IP you want, give it the gateway you want, and then whatever DNS servers that you see fit. I'm about to delete this as soon as I'm done with the video. So I'm not even going to touch that. But if that was something you wanted to change because you're going to be keeping this around for a while, then go ahead and do that. I, like I said in the beginning, I already have an FMC that I'm going to be doing quite a bit with. So I'm going to leave that one up and working and then do away with this one. But that's it. Uh, it's like I said, it was pretty straightforward, very easy install, nothing to be intimidated about. And as I also mentioned earlier, I've had mine up for probably a couple weeks now and it has just been working, working very well. And that's a wrap. I hope you found this video interesting, insightful. And as I've mentioned a couple times throughout, I plan on making some firewall videos, you know, all around the Cisco FTD secure firewall in the next couple days to weeks, kind of, you know, how to set up how to set up HA, onboarding within the FMC. I also want to take a look at the SD-WAN wizard, which is new with 7.6 within the FMC to kind of set up a SD-WAN topology. Looking at the AI features within FMC. So all around should be a good time. All I need though is time to make those, which sometimes is hard to come by, but hope to have that out in the, in the not so distant future. But in the meantime, keep labbing and stay classy. Oh, brother, this guy stinks!